Amen. Praise God. Well, intercessors, you know what to do. Deal with our pastors, those that are on the online, and those that are in the home, intercede on behalf of those. It gives me great pleasure to introduce, not introduce, what am I talking about introduce? Man's been here since he was a baby. Isn't that right, Mom? Yeah. Um, I've known him for some years. He's a good man. He's a friend. But more than that, he's a man of God. God has called him to a work. The anointing is upon him. It gives me great honor to introduce the man of the hour that's going to bring us the word, Pastor Q. Johnson. Come on up. Praise God. Come on, brother. Yeah, you can come on up now. Always trying to give directions, though. I don't know. Hello, test, test, test. Mic check, mic check. Red leather, yellow leather. Can you hear me? What's up, Crenshaw? Y'all right. good? I say, what's up, Crenshaw? Man, wake up, wake up. I know y'all, listen, wait, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Wait, yeah, fix me, fix me up. Fix me, oh, fix me, I appreciate it. Old people are always trying to mess with me. That's my uncle, I can mess with him like that. Don't take any offense to that. Older people, we, we, we need you and we love you. <laughs> oh man, how about them Dodgers? I don't watch baseball, it's all right. All right. We all doing good? Yeah. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Call and response, I like that. Maybe feel like I'm talking to somebody, you know? Y'all looking good? Give it, give it up for yourselves, you're looking good. Thank you all. Uh, first of all, thank you, congregation, for allowing me to impart into you. I appreciate you, thank you very much. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my mother. She's here with me. My wife wasn't able to make it, but my mother's here um, supporting me. Um, give it up for my mama. Boy. What's wrong with y'all? Give it up for my mama. She, she, give it up for my mama. Give her flowers while she's here. I love you. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um, I was born in Florida, 1979. Uh, I was born in, a, in the state of Florida. She and I came out here in 1983. Three day trip. I never forget. Middle of July. It was a 75 Camaro, no air conditioning. <laughs> Took us a day and a half to get through Texas. I actually remember this trip. I was three and a half years old. I remember this trip. Um, my point is saying that my, my mother is the only family, blood family, I have out here. And it's been like that all my life. My, my father's side is on the East Coast. My mother's side is uh, down in Florida. And she and I have been together out here for to next year will be 40 years. So I just gave you context uh, like that to let you know that We've gone through obstacles, we've been, we've been through things, but yet our resolve is strong and we're still here. That actually uh, made us stronger, made our bond stronger. And I appreciate my mother for everything she's done for me and I, and I love her for it. If you have uh, parents in your life that are still with us, please cherish them. That's a, it's definitely a gift. All right? All right, let's jump into it. Y'all not mad at me about the Dodgers, right? Wasn't that terrible? <laughs> Choking like a Popeye's biscuit. All right, listen. <laughs> sad, so sad. All right, all right. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, uh, God's family structure. When they asked me about the title, um, I don't know it was me or it was in my excitement, but I was a little bit too quick in typing. I am talking about God's family structure. However, there's an addendum to it, God's family structure and the division that's within it, OK? Nothing profound, it's just it is what it is, it happens, division. My job is to shine a light on it, use the Holy Spirit to um, uh, um, exercise remedies to resolve that issue so we could be a unified church, amen? I said amen? Okay. Um, speaking of which, because we are the kingdom of God, that's who we are. There's a kingdom of God and there's a kingdom of heaven. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people believe that the kingdom of heaven is where God resides. I'm a technical person, I'm, I'm, I live on technicalities. That's true in a sense, but the kingdom of heaven is also who we are. 
because that's who God is. There's nothing that can bound God. God is boundless. You understand me? So the kingdom of heaven is in God. Everything is in God. The infinite ex expanse of space, it just infinity, is encapsulated by God. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? If he couldn't be, he couldn't be God if he couldn't do something impossible like that. We're talking about somebody who sits upon time, who sits upon on top of the Chronos. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. everything is in God. Heaven is in heaven. I'm sorry, kingdom of heaven is what we are. Yeah. Now, um, uh, therefore. Heaven is in, is in us by virtue of our Heavenly Father. We are heirs with Christ, which makes us, uh, which makes all of us family within Him. We are the body of Christ. We must stand together, undivided. Y'all understand that so far, right or wrong? Okay. Now, question of the day. Well, one of them, I'm going to ask you a few questions tonight, but the, my first question is, is the body of Christ divided? It's not a trick question. You say yes. Are we divided? Say it. We divided? Yeah, no. Okay, talk to me. Don't be whispering at me while I'm up. Y'all talk to me. Are we divided? Yes or no? Yeah. Everybody say no. Anybody say no? Don't, don't, don't say, don't not say no because you don't think I want to hear you, but if you honestly believe that, it's okay. We're here to learn. I would definitely go on to say yes. We are definitely, we are definitely divided. Um, there are four, and as I was sitting here, I thought of uh, more, but I'm definitely going to talk about four, first off, uh, dividers, which are in Christ. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I'm, somebody say, oh, he's always starting stuff. I'm going to start something right now. I'm going to locate somebody. All right, listen, listen to me when I say this, and your first reaction is probably going to be your real reaction. So I'm about dividers, dividers in Christ. Um, president Donald Trump is the best president we ever had. Somebody really felt that, wow. I'm gonna say it again, because maybe y'all didn't hear me on this side. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump is the best president we ever had. Okay. Okay, this is a statement. All right, how about this? President Obama is the worst president we ever had in life. No. Did you feel that little sharp, like, heat that's rushed up your back and those little sweat beads? Like, how dare he say that? Talk about that man did more for this country than anything. But who am I talking about, Trump or Obama? Which one am I talking about? All right, listen, this is not gonna be a political speech. Um, I don't believe what I just said about any of those gentlemen. To be honest with you, I don't care for any of those gentlemen, but that's just me. Um, I'm not gonna give you my personal opinion, but that right there is one of the main dividers of people in Christ, politics, okay? People seem like some people can't have a civilized conversation without getting into an argument about politics. First off, politics is not of God. Politics um, is, uh, is a machine, is a, to me, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I will give it. Um, politics is a divisive entity de uh, constructed to gratify and satisfy an oligarchy. And in layman's terms, somebody gonna be mad with, with politics and the minority of people are gonna be happy in politics. Anytime politics is around, God is not. Because God is not political God. That's why it shouldn't be church politics. Anytime there's church politics, there's always drama. Am I right or wrong? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Y'all was, was loud a minute ago about Obama, now y'all can't say yeah? <laughs> politics is not of God. One of the main dividers of politics. I see, you know, I'm, I, I frequent social media and I see people get online, and especially around November, every four years, we have the same argument. Well, the Republicans are doing this, they don't like black people, and they're in it for the money, and Democrats is, there's a sinking ship and black folks are just on it just because they mama on and this and that. Whatever. It's just a bunch of silly stuff. If it's truly of God, you shouldn't be fighting about it. Um, there are people, the world will tell you how you should think and how you should live based upon you living in Christ. For example, a lot of people, and listen, Whatever your affiliation is, that's your business. I'm not here to rip you on that. That's your business. You do you, please. 
But I have to say this, just because you are affiliated with a certain party, because you think that the Jesus party, the world is telling you that. Basically, the world set up a construct for you to buy into, and they're telling you, since you believe in Jesus, you go over there. This is how you think. Because that's the way we're telling you to think, because this is what we're going to represent as Jesus. Now, like I said, this is not a, a political take today, because I'm the least political person in here. But it's just something I, I've noticed, and it needs to be talked about. This is one of the things. I'm going to talk about other things, but definitely this is, this is the hot topic issue. Just like when I said those two statements about Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama, some of y'all got a little hot. I saw somebody throw, you know, I saw, I saw you back there with, with your thumb down. I saw you back there. I saw that. I see everybody, I saw your expressions change. I see everybody's mood change. Why is that? Why is that? And why do you allow that to interfere with your fellowship with other Christians? There was a time in my life where if I found out you were a Christian and we were hanging together, you had to believe every single thing that I believe or I can't mess with you. And that's wrong. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own, um, I guess, quirks or biases, whatever. You shouldn't stop fellowship with other Christians simply based upon who their worldly affiliations are. You shouldn't do that. That's how you grow and that's how you teach one another. I remember this one pastor got into it with me because um, there was a story I don't know how I got on this. There was a story about a kid in Texas. I never forget. He got kicked out of his parochial, parochial, his Christian school. Uh, that's a definitely no tough word, parochial. I don't, I don't. The church school. It was, a, it was a religious school he was in, high school, and they kicked him out because he was gay. And his pastor was going on saying, "Good, good. The word of God is good. Kick him out. He shouldn't be, he shouldn't be there with us anyway." And I, so I said, "Why? Why? Why is that good to kick somebody out of?" A church, set, a church setting because of what they do in the world or because of how they feel, you missed a prime opportunity to minister to somebody. So, his, so that person's image of Jesus is abandonment. Hmm? And that pastor came back at me and said, well, the word says you shouldn't fellowship with the likes of those of the world and blah, blah, blah. That's cool. Now, how are you supposed to get the word out? If we shunning and kicking everybody out, how are we supposed to get the word out? So we just telling, no, you, you gay, get out. First of all, when did gay become the, the end all be all sin? This, I mean, sin and sin abounds all over the place, but gay is, is the one. You gay, get out. Yeah. Come on, man. Y'all get real. Gay, here, newsflash, and this, is, this ain't my opinion, newsflash, God loves gays. God loves me for doing the sin and the stupid stuff that I've done. God loves you for all the silly stuff that you've done. God loves everybody. I mean, the scriptures say that, right? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. But going back to, I, I went all the way over here, that rabbit hole's over here, I'm supposed to be over here, talking about the, the politics first off. But my point is, my point is with the, with the who do you believe in, in terms of um, the, the, the ex-presidents that I named, um, people put too much trust in man. Every single time you put your trust in man, you're gonna fail. I believe it's Psalm, um, the 118th Psalm, verse eight, it's better to trust in, in, in the Lord than in man. Put your trust in, 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 in the Lord. Put your trust in God. Amen. Tells you to do that. Now here I am talking to myself. I said this in Bible study last time. Everybody knows that I'm a, I'm a huge football fan. Um, and every year, my silly mind gets suckered into it every year, knowing what I'm walking into. I'm walking into that buzz of disappointment every year. I know it, but it's fun. It's fun. But every year, every four years, I should say, uh, uh, um, vote for this person or, or, or vote Bible. In my opinion, I don't think there's a such thing, but don't get me started on that. I'm sorry. But my point is, is to keep your trust in God. That's how, we, that's how we remedy the situation about the politics. People want to put their faith and put, who, who put their beliefs upon other people. And that's not right. You're supposed to show love to everybody, right? That's what we commanded. That's, what, that's, the, that's the ultimate commandment. In the, new, in the new covenant is love. Am I right or wrong? Okay. Next divider, uh, I guess you could say it's the subset of politics that comes out of this, is racism. Racism. For those of you who may not be aware of what racism is, racism is 
has a, has, is multifaceted. Basically, it depends on the color of your skin. There's only one race, the human race. Okay, and um, it's funny, I have a joke to myself, because I remember the, 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 the study Bibles that, that we have, the, the ever increasing faith study Bibles, even in that, it talks about the, well, in the, um, in the beginning, the study section, it talks against interracial marriage. But then I thought about it, I said, that's actually correct. And what I mean by that is since there is only one race, it is a sin to intermingle with other races. Now, if there's a human race, that means if there's another race you're intermingling with, that's not of God. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because people were trying to have sex with angels, that, that weird flesh, that strange flesh. So in that sense, yeah, you ain't supposed to be doing that. But I'm talking about racism that we all experience here on the earth. People, I don't like you because you look like that. I don't like you with your hair this way. I can't fellowship with you because you're black. I don't want to fellowship with you because you're white. And, this, and that ain't right. If you look through the lineage of Christ, he has so many different quote unquote ethnicities and races in his bloodline. He's everybody. He, is, he encompasses everybody. I think it was done purposefully that way to show that everybody is in Jesus. It's food for thought. I don't know. I could be wrong, you know, but it's, it's, it's a good thing because how else can Jesus actually represent us if he wasn't all of us? This is the only section that's giving me this, that's showing me love. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Or am, I that just, or am I just that interesting? Is that what it is? What's he going to say next? <laughs> no, but it's a shame um, racism has, has, has been plagued in the church, in the church for so long, and it's even filtered, actually, probably politics spawned from racism. Even in this country alone, people will feed you that this country was built on Jesus. This country was built on the, on the principles of Christ. That's, one of, that's the biggest fallacy and lie ever. This church was not, this, 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 this uh, Christianity was not built, and this country was not built on the, uh, principa on the not principalities, on the principles of Christ, nor was it built on the foundation of Christ. It was built on the backs of slaves and the indigenous people that were here before we were colonized and discovered. And the cold part about that is, is that the church is what's behind that. The church is the one that pushed that. And we still have evangel an evangelical sect that still belong that, that still believe that, and still push that same BS and saying that the black man is three-fifths or three-twenty, whatever the percentage is, we're not fully man. It's people who still walk, walk around and still believe that. And you know, you have some sambos that still believe that too, that go along with it. I'm sorry. It is what it is. You know, I mean, am I, am I right or wrong? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, this is, what I'm saying is not that profound. I mean, it's, it's history. It's there. You know, it's had reverberating, it's had reverberating effects throughout the perpetuity of time that's, that's led us to where we are now, fighting. Everybody fighting, fighting, fighting. I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. Fighting for what? Just because you want to be right. That's the pride of life. Get my, getting ahead of myself again, because that's the fourth thing. But before we get to part of life, well, before I get there, politics, racism, those are the two dividers of the faith. The third one, what do you think it is? Elder Jenkins, what do you think the third one is? Were you sleep? You my man. You <laughs> no, no, no. Um, seriously, the third divider, in my opinion, is that green dollar bill. And it's just so funny. You have slave masters on the thing, but don't get me started on that. It, you know what? I will say that because people are still slaved to money. Wow, look at that. I'm, even when I'm wrong, I'm right. Look at that. It just, it just, came, just came to me. That's the new slave master, money. People will do whatever they can to get that. For the love of money. And for you seasoned people, y'all better not be thinking about the OJs right now. <laughs> I mean, but it's true, because what they say that's all, you will do those, people will do those things 
for some money. If you if you if you ever place if you ever place in a in a situation where your morals are in jeopardy and you choose to do uh, you, you choose to go against your morals, you, you you've already you've already um, sold your soul. Thank you very much because I was going to say something so much more worldly. <laughs> you, you've already done something strange with some change. That wasn't it, but that's the best that's the best way I can put it. Money. I've been in situations. Um, or I've been in certain areas where I've seen people sacrifice their ethics and their morals just, wow. just to get a little extra money. Even in the church. I ain't talking about in the world, I'm talking about in the church. I have friends, and I'm not a snitch by saying this because I ain't naming nobody, but I, I know people that cheat on their taxes. You know, when you get that, you know, you get that social security number for them, child that don't, them children that don't belong to you. Hey man, let me, let me, let me claim your kid, you know. Mm. It's happened. I, I, you know what? Years ago, I considered doing it. I considered doing it. I was like, well, I can get how much extra? Man, slide that over here. <laughs> My tax man was like, hey, I can do this for you, but you know, if you get caught, it's on you. Man, listen. Man, listen. I'm like that survival commercial. I can't take that ride. I can't. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was right there. The number was right there. All I do is but no, nah, you go ahead, you go ahead and do that. You go ahead and do that. But people will, will, will for the for things I've seen people do for money, in the church, in the church. How many of y'all um, wake up in the middle of the night? Well, first off, how many of y'all watch BET? Put your hands up, you know why you watch BET. Come on now, ain't no sin to watch BET, put your hands up. In the middle, how many of y'all fell asleep with the TV on BET? You can wake up in the middle of the night and they selling holy oil and rugs and stuff like that. How many of y'all seen that? Huh? So now you monetizing your quote unquote gift. Is that godly? No. Say, is that godly? No. Well, maybe some of y'all ain't sure. That's why y'all ain't saying nothing. That, that is not godly to do that because you're making a mockery of God at that point. Okay? I can go give me some of that, that olive oil too and sell it to you for 15 bucks. Then give me 15 bucks. You're healed now. It don't work that way. God doesn't require your payment for his love. God doesn't require your payment for him to, for him to be God. Okay? Hopefully that's a news flash and that's a revelation for somebody. But money. I've seen people fall out over money. Hmm? There are people who owe me money right now. You know, but I look at it this way. There was a, a scene in one of my favorite movies. Um, geez, I can't even think of the name of it right now. A Bronx Tale, I'm sorry, A Bronx Tale. And um, the lesson that was taught in that was this, this cat, uh, my man, uh, Collegio, that's the, that's the, Collegio, what? That was the name, that was the joke in the movies, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> there was a part in the movie he was talking to his mentor, he was talking to his OG, and the OG was like, look man, the man owes you how much, $20? Yeah, $20, he's like, can you afford to lose it? He's like, yeah, look at it this way, Are, is, is that your friend? He was like, no, it's not my friend, I can't stand a guy. Look at it this way, you paid, gave him $20, you basically paid, him, paid for him to get out your life forever. Man, listen, your daddy was a smart man too, you see? It's all about perspective on a lot of things, but when it comes to money, people's perspective and vision gets a little hazy. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Well, come over here, come over here and, and, and pray for me. Uh, sure. How much you gonna get me? Oh. Oh. One thing I will say about, uh, about Dr. Price, but I, which was held on to me forever, is that when he goes somewhere, he doesn't ask for a stipend, he doesn't ask for anything. He believes in God. And that ministered to me. I remember he said that since the 80s, as long as I've been here. And that has always stuck with me. That's like when I do weddings or when I do things, I don't ever ask for anything. I don't think you should charge for the things of God. Amen. Show me where Jesus did that. Come on now. Hmm? Yeah. Jesus had a whole buffet with the fish and loaves. It didn't charge nobody one nickel, one shekel or anything, right? That's right. That's right. He said, all y'all sit over there, I got you. Boom. Servitude. Service. That's what Christianity is all about. That's what being a follower of Christ is all about, serving. Not, serving. not serving because you think you can get something out of it, but serving because it's right. Oh, 
careful. I'll get out my notes. Now the fourth thing. I believe this actually encompasses all of it. The pride of life. Pride of life. That's the devil's go-to. The pride of life. As a matter of fact, that's what got him kicked out of heaven. Pride of life. Pride of life everybody has because everybody wants to be right. And going back to what I said about um, how I used to fellowship with people of the faith. And if you didn't believe the same thing that I did, you had to go. Mm -hmm. And here I am playing basketball with Mormons every Friday. <laughs> it's not a joke. I do. It is what it is. My thing is, if you believe, you believe Jesus Christ, yes. You believe he's your savior? Cool. All right, we can fellowship. Now, the thing of it is, people are going to have their differences. I'm just not going to shun you because of your difference. That's the difference right there. You see? The pride of a life says, I want to be right all the time. You ever been around somebody who just says, I have to be right all the time? They just want to argue. Somebody just want to argue everything you say. The sky is blue. No, it's indigo, actually. It has a slight <laughs> shade of violet with the cascading white silver lined skies and the clouds. Man, come on with that. This guy be, you know what? I can speak about that because I used to be that person. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Yeah, me. I should argue with you just for the sake of arguing. Because I want to be right. Be wrong is two left shoes half the time. You just got to be loud. Loud and wrong. I think after my 58th loud and wrong, I said, you know what? Maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe I just need to go ahead and just turn this thing around. <laughs> that ain't me. I need to shut up. And that's what a lot of us need to do, actually, just shut up. You speak in on situations and judgment creeps in. Yeah. You know the Bible does say judge, but it's not talking about putting on the white wig and the black robe, judging people, because we are not, and I repeat, we are not licensed, nor are we equipped to judge any man on this planet. We can examine, we judge situations, but we don't judge people. Huh? We don't judge people. Too many people out here judging everybody. Oh, she got pregnant. She must be doing this, doing that, whatever. What about the guy she was with? Y'all don't say nothing about him because his quote unquote sin is, is hidden. She pregnant. She got the bump. So you can see what she did and everybody want to ostracize her. Yeah. She's this. She, people make mistakes, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you stone throwers? You, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. That pride of life. I can't be wrong. I'm always right. It's just me. You ever hear a story from somebody and where they had a falling out with somebody and they, and they give you their side and they list everything that other person does, but they don't list anything that they did. Amen. Come on I'm in counseling sessions. That's why I got to separate them. I talk to the woman, talk to the man. I talk to them both at first and I separate them because everybody got their own story. And half the time it's never the truth. Three sides, it's three, three sides. We all heard this before. Their side, the other side, and the truth. You have no idea how true that is. Everybody want to highlight everybody else's faults, but you don't want to take the plank out your own eye. Come on now. Hmm? Right there, right there. Amen. That's it. Okay. That's true. Matter of fact, everybody, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's a beautiful day today. I thought it was going to rain today. I was like, no. I got my Jordans on. I can't walk outside in the, <laughs> in the, in, 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 in the, in the wetness. I can't do that. Oof. Yeah, Zoom. Yeah, have a Zoom church, huh? That's funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we there? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Excuse me. Brothers and sisters, I'm reading from the, um, oh my goodness, they didn't change the, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the NIV. Everybody in here has the New King James, correct? Well, let me adjust that. Not everybody. Well, you know what? Since it's not everybody, I'm just gonna read what I have then, okay? Amen? Just a, it, hey, listen, just follow along, I'm reading verses one through six, okay? Some wording is gonna be a little different, but the meaning is still the same, amen? Brothers and sisters, I cannot address you as people who live out of spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. This is Paul talking. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready, 
you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, jealousy and quarreling is uh, ending what other somebody else has. That jealousy, that jealousy will hinder you from your blessings. Jealousy will block your blessings. Quarreling will block your blessings. It's okay to have a disagreement, but a quarrel is something different. That's when y'all about to tussle, okay? Y'all about to move some furniture when it's quarreling. Okay, that means some, some fighting. Throw about to throw down, exactly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Basically, when you're fighting and divided, you look like the world. The world can't tell you apart. We're, we're meant to stand out from the world so they can come to us. We're supposed to be that lighthouse. If we're acting like the darkness, everybody's going to be lost. Hmm? Uh, now, I like this part right here. Are you not acting like mere humans? That's, I love that statement because we're supposed to be a representation of God. If God is in us, we're God. God. Hello? We are God. We're small G's. We're not big. We can't create stuff like that. We are still God. We are still an extension of God. And if we're acting like the, we're acting like the world, we're not doing anybody any good. We're not doing anybody any service. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, and God has been making it grow. I love what he says here when he says, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos. That to me, and this is, this is my opinion again, this is where I believe denominations came from. I want to be right, I want to do things a certain way. That's the only, that's the only real difference between denominations, practices, what you do. Usually a lot of times it's inconsequential um, to God what it is because it's, it's something that's ritualistic. That's, that's the difference between the two, the difference between Methodist, Baptist, all of that. There's, there's something minor, some, I forgot what denomination is. They don't even play music, but what, 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 does anybody know what that is? Church of Christ, they don't play music? What was that when we was in Florida for the uh, family reunion and we was in that church, that old plantation church, and they was, you know, they was, they was doing the, uh, come on. That was Church of Christ? Man, listen to me. They were singing a cappella. They don't believe in music, but they were tapping on the floor and clapping. So I'm just like, wait a minute, you, you a little hypocritical at this point. Because, you know, when you tapping on the floor, that becomes an instrument, right? Amen? Listen, I'm going to tell you a funny story. We was in that church, and they were singing Parliament because they said, swing down, sweet chariot, let me ride. And I was like, they, they that worldly in here? They can't play music? They sing in Parliament? I didn't know that was a Negro spiritual at the time. <laughs> I had no idea. And I was like, these, 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 they, they wild in here. I, I can get with the Parliament. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. That's, that's a Negro spiritual. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. And we was on a, plant, was on a plantational church, too, in, in Tallahassee, Florida. i never forget that. Learn something new every day. But I said that before about the fellowship because, like I said, I, you know, I, I hang out with these Mormons, play with them every, every, every Friday morning, play basketball, um, talk to people who even, I even talk to people or, or fellowship with people who don't utilize the Holy Spirit. It is what it is. You're lost, but hey, it, I'm not going to shun you. My, at, 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 at that point, it's my job, the onus is on me to be a proper representation of Christ so you can follow. Okay? You can't, you can't, how many parents have done the, the whole um, do as I say, not as I do? Man, don't get quiet on me. I see all these parents in here. I know y'all done said that before. I've said it myself a couple of times. I've said it. Man, no, nah, it don't work. I'm going to tell you something else. When, we, when, when you're in that pride of, right, pride of life and you have to be right, I remember this one time, my, my daughter and I, she's seven years old, bless her heart. And uh, we were going somewhere, we were in the car. Now, let me preface this, I do not have road rage. I do not. I used to jump out the car on people before, but that was, that was a different time. I have jumped out, but, hey, don't judge me. But um, we, was, we, was come, we was driving somewhere, and somebody in another lane did something real goofy, did something real stupid, and I was just in sins, I was hot. Then I heard, this little sweet angelic voice <laughs> in the back seat. Daddy, why are you so mad? Uh, don't you have the Holy Spirit? 
Don't you clap for her. Don't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm mad. You don't, you don't correct me when I'm running wrong with something right. You don't, you, go to bed. You don't do that. I'm telling her to go to bed and she in the car seat. I was, but she was 100% right. But when you're in your flesh and you just mad, you just hulking out, you just mad, you don't want to hear that. How many of y'all, you know what, well, forget y'all, y'all ain't, ain't answering nothing. I've been there before where I've been that mad. I don't want to hear nothing you're talking about. It could, be the, it could be right as rain. Let me be mad. I'm not encouraging anybody to do that, but that goes to show that you have to uh, uh, have control of yourself. You have to have that self-control. Hmm? All the time, every day, every hour, every minute, every second, all the time. All the time. All right, all right, all right. Let's go on to uh, Luke 11. 11.14 to be exact. Yeah, if she gonna get at me saying, you, should, you have the Holy Spirit, you shouldn't be so mad. Man, listen. And it would really make me mad because she was right. <laughs> That's what really upset me. You, 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 you as a parent, that was my go-to. I, I had nothing for that. Go to bed. That's, that's my, how many parents used to go to bed before? How many of y'all did that before? Telling yourselves, you know you've done it before. You ain't got nothing else in the, in, in the chamber. You used to go to bed. Get out of here. Because you know they're right. Bless her heart. I love her. I know they're watching. What's up, baby? You and Josh. What's happening? I love you both. All right. Where did I, where did I tell you to go to? I told you to go to Luke, right? Okay. I guess it would be good if I went there myself, right? Yeah, Luke 11, 14. We're going to read these 10 verses. Um, Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. You know, let, me, let me stop right there. Yeah, there's always going to be haters around you. There's always going to be somebody hating on you. No, no, no matter what you're doing, somebody's going to be hating you. That comes from that pride of life. Well, you got on Jordan. They ain't real. <laughs> Where his wife at? She ain't, she's supposed to be here. Look at that. They, they, they household ain't in order. You better mind your business. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on. That's the main thing. You don't know what's going on in people's lives. You don't know what people are going through. Some people lash out because of that. Some people you know, uh, uh, become introverted because of that. Our job is not to talk about them. Our job is to love upon them, pray for them, and do what we can to help, help all of us grow. Amen? Yeah, all right, let's go back to Jesus and these demons. All right, Jesus was driving out a demon. They were amazed. They said, by Beelzebub, prince of demons, he's driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. You ever been ministering to somebody before? Well, I'm, let me talk about me. Oh, 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 you believe in God, huh? You believe, oh, well, make it rain. Yeah. <laughs> Drop some money out the sky, huh? Go ahead and fly. There, there, there's a pool, go walk on that water right there. You have people like that. My goofy behind actually tried to do that one time. I'll never forget it. You know, I'm telling them myself, but whatever, I'm grown now. There was a time, we know we have that fountain over there, right? And I remember, I, I went to school here. Uh, I went to school many, a, few, a few years ago. And um, somebody dared me to, to jump, in the, jump in the thing, jump in the, jump in the fountain. Dr. Betty, I was a kid. I was a kid. I was, I, you know, we, we, we do stupid stuff when we kids. You know, but I had the wherewithal to take my shoes off, roll my pants leg up, and I, cause they, they think they threw like a, a $5 in there. You believe in God, that's your faith, that's your faith making you want to get in there and get it. See what happens when more money comes involved and stuff like that, see that? I didn't even mean to tell that. And so I hear my goofy behind going in there. Ooh, this is cold, but I still blah, 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 got that money. Got back out. All that for $5. But when you're a teenager, when you're 14, 15 years old, you just hit the battle. You know what I'm saying? I'm going crazy in the vending machine. The vending machine, and I'm buying all I want 
from the uh, cafeteria. I got the big old, we used to have these big old tostadas. I got the big old tostada thing and the, and the thing along with it. That was faith and active today. Let me stop. I'm sorry. All right, back to Jesus. The Jesus, te- oh, I'm sorry, the others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided, this is important, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. That's that division. That's that division. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, if Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? It's true. I say this because you can claim, I'm sorry, because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now, if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The kingdom of God is so powerful. Well, before I say that, he's 100% right. Jesus, of course he's right. He's Jesus. You can't grow and you can't stand if you're divided against yourself. You know how powerful God has to be with all of this division with, um, amongst his children and amongst his family, and we're still here? We're still able to carry out the word. We're still able to deliver the word, even with all this division and turmoil within us. I don't mean individually, but I'm talking about as the body of Christ. That just goes to show you how strong the power of God is. There's people who, there's this time I've ministered to people and I wasn't doing stuff right. I was divided amongst myself. because so I knew this wasn't right, certain things that I was doing. I knew it wasn't right. And I was conflicted against myself. That's division. When you're conflicted against yourself about doing the right thing versus the wrong thing. You want to do the wrong thing because it feels so good. Right? I know I'm not the only one who felt good when I was sinning. I know I'm not. I said it, yes. Why is everything supposed to be bad make me feel so good? Because it's fleshly. And your flesh leads to the grave. That's why you have to have that discipline that power within yourself to know, I'm not going to do that. It feels good, but I'm not going to do that. Hmm? That goes with everything. Even the things you intake in your body, like, like people look, look down on those who, who, who do drugs. How could you get on that stuff, the, 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 the booger sugar, this and that, and you, you doing this, and your stuff's calling you. And people bless their hearts who, who have been addicted to certain things, that they, they feel like that, that vice is calling them. It's true, it happens. But the cold part is, you look at those drug addicts and people who are on drugs bad, but then here you are going down the sugar aisle, going down that, addicted to that sugar, which kills more people than drugs to this day. Sugar is a drug. How many of y'all been on the diet with no Krispy Kreme donuts is calling you? Hmm? Listen to me, let me tell you something. Even when I was going through my stint with, with the diabetes, there was times when I had to choose between my wife or some sweet potato pie. Mm. Sometimes the sweet potato pie won. I'm gonna be honest. I had to have some pie. And that was damning to me because that's why drugs and things like of that nature is not good because you're tearing down your temple. You're tearing down you. It's a gradual suicide. When you know you're not supposed to be doing something, you do it anyway. Hmm? Y'all go ahead and marinate on, marinate on that for a second. What was my point? The, the, the division of God driving out people by, yeah, thank you. Um, we're here standing strong, our resolve is strong as, as the body of Christ that we're supposed to present. I'm saying this to the world so they can come unto us to seek to find God. Because that's what, in the Old Testament, that's what Israel was. They were supposed to be the ministers of the world. That's, that's why they were, they were held to a, a certain standard, a higher standard than the Gentiles. That was the whole point of it. When Jesus came, boom, the world, everybody get together, we be example to him. We still have to live a certain standard so people can look at us and see God. 
We don't have to walk around with the fish on the cars and the uh, honk for Jesus shirts and all that kind of stuff. We don't have to do that. Our actions and the way we live our lives should be a telltale of where we are in our walk with God. Huh? Because I guarantee you this, the people that, that jump up and shout, Jesus this, Jesus that, in five minutes, they cussing somebody out at the bank. Or they on the 405 cussing somebody out because you really want to test your salvation? Get on that 405 anytime during the week between the times of 12.30 and 7.30 p.m. Test your faith. Let me see how Christian you are in the 405 or the 101. Huh? The 90. Now, the 90 cool if you're going, if you're going west. The 90's all right, but no, the, oh, the 91, the 91, 91, the 110, and the, and the uh, what else I said, the 405. Oh, you just be driving all over the place, huh? That's what you be doing, huh? Yeah, test, t- test your gangster. Matter of fact, test your gangster if you got this parking lot tonight. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see uh, today, let me, let me see your spiritual gangster. Let me see how many people be blowing their horns at somebody. You, no, 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 no. Yeah, we all, we all need it. I'm not talking about nobody. But earthly laws, earthly laws do not apply to God. Kingdoms cannot stand when they're divided. However, we are still here. We can be doing better, and we should be doing better, but we have hang-ups. It's been the devil's priority to separate and divide us from God, the Word, and each other. Matter of fact, that was his first tactic when he got into the garden, right? Implementing doubt. Amen. If you have doubt, if you doubt in somebody, that's a form of separation. That's a form of division. Hmm? Did God really say that? Yeah. Now you're introducing deceit. Now you're introducing lies. Well, did he really say that? Semantics, that's where that comes in. Did he really say that? Well, maybe he didn't say that. The devil perverts everything God institutes. Since enmity was put on him, he strives to put enmity between us as followers of Christ. It happens to the church, and it happens within our families. You know, about this perversion thing, God created Eve, and from Adam and Eve spawned everybody else. Women are one of the most beautiful things that God has ever created. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for making, for making, making women. Beautiful. But you know, the devil's job is to pervert the things of God. I never forget this one time. I was in Atlanta. Don't get ahead of me. I was in Atlanta. I forget which street I was going down. I was by one of my partners. And these two beautiful women was walking down the street. I wasn't married, by the way. I wasn't married at this time. I was still single. These two beautiful women were walking. Had long, that, that long Polynesian hair, and they had the long, just this with Everything was looking right. I said, pull up next to him, pull up next to him. Pull up next to him. You know, we got a little bit in front of him so I can, you know, walk up to us. I'm hanging, I'm, 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 I'm the scrub in the passenger side of my best friend's ride, and I see him coming out this way. I see they both have beards. Uh-oh. They both had, they was men. Wow. That's the perversion I'm talking about. Going back to what I said earlier, listen, God loves gays. Don't be fooling me. If you're looking like a woman, you better be a woman. And I'm not saying that to offend anybody, but let's, let's get it out there. Let's, let's get it. I want a natural born woman. That's me. If you like something else, that's your business. Don't share that with me. I'll still hang out with you, maybe. But, <laughs> but I want women. Listen to me. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I saw them. I said, oh, they, they look real right. They might be the next Miss, uh, not the future Miss Johnson. Man, no. Leonard and Leroy, I saw them when they was coming up here. I said, no, sir. That's what I named them. I don't know their names. And Leonard and Leroy, I, I, I just call them that. Wow. Yeah. The perversion is real. The perversion is real. That's why you got to be on your most holy faith at all times. The devil's going to throw all these, all these things. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Do that. Accept them. Let's, 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 let's show our kids early. Let's indoctrinate everybody in, into this thing that we are into. Like I said, you can love them. You don't have to do it, but you can love them. And let me say this, and I'm going to get off this, but it is not our job as a church to talk about them with different epithets or, or anything like that. You're supposed to love them at all times. 
Amen. You know, if a man, if a dude came in here, came from the go from, from the go go stage, and he got on go go boots with feathers like this, and he just came from one of them parades, you love him anyway. You love him. You don't kick people out just because they gay. That don't make no doggone sense. For God to love the world, they don't look at three, uh, John 3.17, John 3.17, where it said Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. Everybody look at 3.16, but they don't look at 3.17. It is not our job to condemn or to judge anybody. Our job is to love people and show Christ. I don't know. Why. I, that was for somebody. That, that ain't, that, I ain't supposed to be talking about that. Yeah. But like I said, it happens in our families, the, the division. Families, like literal family, blood families. There's divisions among them. I hear it all the time. I see it all the time. There's a show called Family Feud. Families fighting. But I get it. There's other families fighting against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get the point of what I'm saying. There, there's infighting. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a question. All right. I want you all to be honest. How many people... Well, you know, don't even put yourself on blast. Well, you can do whatever. How many people know of somebody who has old chicken grease in a can <laughs> in their kitchen right now? Or, in, or, or, or they've done it in the past. Raise your hands. Oh, that's one. Uh, th thank you. Put them up. You better put your hand up. You know you. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Why? Why do you, why do you, why do you, why do you, I'm going to ask you this. You've been talking to me. Why, do you, why, why have you seen that? Why do people put grease in a can? Because of the flavor of the grease sometimes. Okay. You know, they use it as seasoning. Sometimes they just don't have recycle it. Okay. So old grease with the, with the seasoning in it. That's not the answer I was looking for. That was a good answer. Huh? Tradition. Thank you. There it is right there. I put grease in a can because my mama did it and because big mama did it. We all put because of tradition. Tradition ain't nothing but... Uh, peer pressure from dead people. Okay? That's all, that's all tradition is. I put it in there because we, we, Big Mama used to do it. Don't ask no rhyme or reason. Just do it because somebody else do it. That's how general, generational curses get passed down. I'm doing this because this person before me did that. Or I'm going to beat you with the hot rod track or, or the hot wheels track because my mama did that to me and my mama before her did that to her too. That's called child abuse. Okay? I'm going to do this because the person before me did that. That's how general, generational curses thrive. It's supposed to stop with you. If you know it's not right, you have the power to stop it. You have the authority to stop it. Don't just keep doing it because somebody else did it before you. Or, this is my favorite one, I'm going to do it because this is how I was raised. Did you like that? Did you, did you, did you, did you really learn from that? No, you didn't like the feel. So why would you want to impose that on somebody else? I don't know what else to do. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but it's true. You have to put in some work to change the course in the direction of uh, generational curses. I, I heard somebody say, um, in my family, you know, diabetes runs in our, runs in our family. It stopped with me. You got to be tying your heart in and take them knees out. Bah! It's not going to run in my family. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have the power to stop that. We serve a God that sickness and disease is under his foot. And since heaven is in us and we are the kingdom of God, we are the kingdom of heaven, it's subject to us as well. Amen. Our new title and rank is king. Jesus, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. We're those kings he's the king of. Who are our subjects? The demons, principalities, things of the devil, the kingdom of darkness. That, those are our subjects. That's why the world is thriving so much because their flesh is being, their flesh is being fed from a defeated, um, I don't think I said that right. You know what I'm saying. Yo, when your flesh is being fed by a defeated foe, that's why you have calamity in your life. Generational curses need to be conquered and uprooted immediately. General, general curse, generational curses are habits or behaviors that have been passed from one generation to the next. They, are, they also, I'm sorry, generational curse also describes the cumulative effect on a person of things that their ancestors did, believed, or practiced in the past and a consequence 
uh, and ancestors' actions, beliefs, and sins are being passed down. That's deep. Doing something just because somebody else did it in the past. That's why we have history. That's why we have history classes, so we don't repeat the folly of the past. Amen? Amen. That's why we have scriptures, which, I mean, I know the, 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 the Bible, the Word of God is not a history book, but there's some history in it, so we don't repeat the sins of our fathers. We don't repeat the sins of the past. You know? And I, you know what? I'm going to say this, and I have a little bit of time, but I'm going to say this. Uh, I know I made a crack about old people earlier. I'm, I, I, apologize. I apologize if I offended anybody. That wasn't my goal to do that. It was just a joke. But it, you know what? Come back full circle now. Because we need us as the younger generation. We need the older generation. I believe it's in Joel um, is it 2. Yeah, Joel 2, 28. Old men have dreams. Young men have visions. The older people still have the vision because dreams are something that are um, hoped for, but visions are what's worked towards. Okay, so the older people are here who've lived; they 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 they've got their bars and stripes because they live life, the war of life. They've done it. Here we are, young people following up behind them because the the older generation, the first generation. I'm gonna stop saying old. Oh, the first generation is supposed to come in here, boom, lay the foundation. The next generation after that, boom. Establish the next precept upon precept. Just keep, keep going. Full circle, football, boom. Fullback, boom, goes through the line. Who comes behind the fullback? The running back, boom, clears the way. Running back goes right through. That's how, we, that's how we're supposed to do it. We're not supposed to despise each other because of our youth or because of our experience. We're not supposed to be dividing. There's a huge gap between generation A and generation B. There's a huge gap. It needs to be divided and it needs to be bridged. Am I right or wrong? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, oh, this, you know what, oh, uh, seasoned folks, please don't get mad at me, but I hear y'all all the time. Look at him walking around with his pants around his ankles like that. You can't be doing it. In my day, we, we didn't do all that. Pull your pants up, boy. <laughs> yeah, if you was around in the 70s, y'all needed to slap yourselves because I've seen y'all with the fly collars and the, and the Rick James boots all the way up to here and stuff. I've I seen the stuff. I've seen the pictures of the Isley Brothers when their shirts is tied up like this. And you, come on, brother, come on now. Every generation got their own thing. That's why we, we come together. We all got our own little quirks. And I don't mean to be talking about nobody because I love Prince, so I mean, it, it is what it is. But listen, I'm gonna end by saying this. In church settings and in the home, the fabric of God's family structure must remain intact and pure. Just like general curses can be passed down, so can positive traits and habits. The onus is upon us to ensure that goodness and godly positivity, uh, godly positivity reverberate throughout the perpetuity of time. Speaking of time, I thank you for yours, and that is mine. So everybody, please, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your mindset is something